Good morning, everyone, and thank you for that. So glad you're here on a beautiful Sunday morning. We're going to start our service by singing Jamie Lula's We Are the Harvest. Good morning. Good morning. So wonderful to see so many of you here with us in person today. And welcome to all of you who are joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom. Thank you, thank you for being with us here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science for our Sunday morning service. So let's begin by, well, for those of you, let's begin by reminding you, uh, if you're here in the sanctuary, if you happen to have a cell phone or anything else that might make noise during the service. If you could please make sure that's silenced, we'd greatly appreciate it. And those of you watching remotely, you get to decide what you want to do about that. But I suggest turning it off just to not have distractions. <laughs> OK, so with that, let's join together in prayer. Ah, taking this moment to turn within and to allow that part of us that can sense beyond the realm of the physical, that can sense beyond our physical senses of me, you, him, her, this and that, here and there, to perceive the interconnectedness of all. Because truly, all creation is interconnected on the unseen side of life because all creation originates in the one life, the one mind, the one pure love vibration that is God and that that essence of God's nature permeates everything in creation, including each of us gathered for this service this morning. I know that we're feeling the calling of that one life, that one infinite love, to have a greater knowingness, a greater experience of itself through each of us. And I know that every element of this service this morning supports 
that intention, that we are awakened to that love vibration that we share as a spiritual community. We are touched by the love vibration of all of those who are of service this morning. I know that we are moved by our music ministry this morning with God flowing through Sam and Karen and our soloist Sherry Williams this morning. And I absolutely know that we open our hearts and minds to the message of the divine that is spoken through Reverend Nadine. I know that Reverend Nadine is that channel as she said yes to spirit, yes to allowing this message to be spoken through her and that it inspires us, it uplifts us, it reminds us of that divine essence at the core of our being so we can experience it more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks for all the blessings I know we receive in this time together. Calling it all good and very good, I release this word knowing it is so in the mind of God. I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. So now I invite you to please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now let's join in our congregational song, What a Wonderful World.
Okay, please be seated. <sighs> All right, so this is the time when we give ourselves the gift of just allowing ourselves to get still and commune with that wonderful inner world, that kingdom of the divine that lies within each of us. So for the next five minutes, I invite you to just get still in your bodies. Just allow yourself to relax. Close your eyes. And silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over again to yourself, and I will bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
see your face Your name becomes my sacred prayer A mantra everywhere With your sweet love I rise to grace And find you in my highest place In my highest place There's not one trace of maddening pace That gets me down no somber shadows hanging around In love and bliss our souls embrace You take me to my highest place And we're looking down from beyond the sky To watch the cosmic show A glitter in a golden eye. When I'm here with you, the world shines new. No frantic fuss with Father Time. Each heartbeat is a gift. Sublime, we shimmer in enchanted space when I'm with you in my highest place, and we're looking down from beyond the sky to watch the cosmos. Glitter in a golden eye. And with God in view, the world shines new. No frantic fuss with Father Time. Each heartbeat is a gift sublime. We shimmer in enchanted space when I'm with you in my highest place. Hello. Good morning. I'm so happy to be with you here today. Every now and then they let me out. <laughs> so today I'm going to ask you a few questions to ponder. And I couldn't resist because in keeping with tradition, I have to tell you this joke. It appealed to me because I think because I do a lot of weddings. On their way to get married, a young Catholic couple is involved in a fatal car accident. The couple found themselves sitting outside the pearly gates waiting for St. Peter to process them into heaven. While waiting, they began to wonder, could they possibly get married in heaven? When St. Peter showed up, they asked him, and he said, I don't know. This is the first time someone has asked that. Let me go find out. And he left. The couple sat and waited and waited. Two months passed, and the couple still waited. While waiting, 
they began to wonder what would happen if it didn't work out. Could they get a divorce in heaven? <laughs> After yet another month, St. Peter finally returned, looking somewhat begraggled. Yes, he informed the couple, you can get married in heaven. Great, said the couple, but we're just wondering, what if things don't work out? Could we get a divorce in heaven? St. Peter, red-faced with anger, slammed his clipboard to the ground. What's wrong, asked the frightened couple. Oh, come on, St. Peter shouted. It took me three months to find a priest up here. Do you have any idea how long it will take for me to find a lawyer? I couldn't resist. <laughs> Blame it on the corona. <laughs> Lawyer's still getting a bad rep. All jokes aside, we can be in heaven right here and right now by our choices. What are you choosing? Today I'm talking about corona bonus. Not the 10 pounds I've gained or the six packs that they now deliver. <laughs> but the wisdom and insights that we had the opportunity to gain. And yet, I am sensitive to the losses of loved ones near and dear to us. I personally knew a few people who crossed over from COVID. My sincere condolences. And I have two relatives who just tested positive for COVID, one in Arizona, and one in Florida. As I look back at 2020, the first corona bonus for me was that quarantine provided the context for deep introspection. I spoke to so many people who now realize that their formerly busy and hectic lives were part of running away from themselves. Some said they have been running away from their deep spiritual practices. They felt that they were running away from a part of themselves that were unhealed. Some said it gave them a chance to look at the woundedness that we are often projecting onto other people. Stuff we are afraid of looking at. Wounds, hate, resentment, even obsessive consumption and consumerism. Yes, Corona slowed us down enough. We needed to be present, perhaps not multitasking to a point where we blocked out the still small voice. The year also gave us a chance to look at the law, the dark side of law enforcement. We couldn't run away from the public execution of George Floyd, another dark moment. I watched it so many times on the news outlets. It was horrible, but I couldn't look away. I was in quarantine and felt so helpless. Yet, we had to look at what happened, and I didn't want to see it this ever again. As a person of color, this horrific event is familiar in my culture, nothing new to us. I witnessed Rodney King's beating on television and friends of friends experiencing abusive encounters with law enforcement, with lawsuits costing us taxpayers millions and millions of dollars. This event is no stranger to us but finally, the world would see our America for all that it represents in this time in history. Some of us may know my personal story that I shared when I did a talk on forgiveness about my nephew who spent 17 and a half years in prison for a murder of a deputy sheriff that he did not commit. He was framed by rogue cops who were hell-bent on solving this case. 
was sad. It took Jim McCoskey from an organization called Centurion Memories Ministries, which is sort of like uh, an innocent project, what they call an innocent project today. They had the resources to go into the community and find witnesses who were coerced into framing my nephew and his friend. They found lawyers that worked pro bono to find the truth. It was a high profile case called Clarence Chance and Benny Powell back in 1993. It's indelible in my memory when the judge, Florence Marie Cooper, hit her gavel and said, she gave my nephew and his friend their freedom and said, what law enforcement did is reprehensible. And I said all of that to say that we need to look more closely at who we hire for law enforcement. George Floyd gave us another look at that. Police are not supposed to kill guilty people either. This is why we have a justice system. But from my view, it's beginning to look like just us. I mean, people of color. Here's the bonus. Now people have begun asking questions like, am I a part of white privilege? And what can I do about it? That provided the context for so many people to say, no more. Not just Minneapolis, people worldwide rose up saying, we must deconstruct racism and injustice. Something has to change. Ah, grace in the midst of darkness. What a bonus. I know when some of you saw my talk title, you were wondering, what? <laughs> could, what could she possibly find in this corona period? The corona bonus has created an opening in our own awareness and the awareness of society. We've begun to ask questions differently and investigate differently. For some, it was a stripping down to nothing at all at the same time. The distractions, I gotta go here, I must go there, I have to be seen, I have to stay busy, I must stay relevant. I remember one of my teachers, Reverend Michael Beckwith, once at a talk he did, he said, so what if you win the rat race? You're still a rat. <laughs> when, this, when I heard this, this resonated with me because I was in that rat race. At that time, I was a single parent going to ministerial school and working on a commission-only job and with an active social life. I love to go dancing on Friday nights <laughs> and still do. When something horrific happens, we often can't see the good that's taking place. We get so focused on the pain and the drama, and sometimes it takes time, hours, months, or years of retrospect to realize that this seeming horror was a gift, an opportunity for change, for love, for standards to be changed, laws to be elevated, and for the greater knowing that the situation has its own inherent value. But it requires us to be open to look for the lessons and be a part of the solution. But first, we must change our perspective. May I digress? I may be all over the place today because that's what happens when you've been on lockdown for so long <laughs> and you get to talk. <laughs> what strikes me is today in 2021 AD, people think that God the creator plays favorites in variants of skin tones and colors. I still have to pause and check my judgment of this ignorance. God created colorful hues, 
plants, trees, flowers of different colors. A pink rose is not more special than a red rose. And yet, in 2021, people are still ignorant of God's handiwork. And still to this day, people are walking around saying that they love God and that they are religious or spiritual people and they hate a part of God's creation. Riddle me this. Ask yourself, are you a part of the consciousness of racism and perpetuation of division on the planet? Are you one who knows that we are all cut from the same cloth? God is not separate from its creation. Are you a source of inspiration to uplift and inspire? Are you a part of her consciousness? The same spark of God is in you and is in everyone. Look beyond skin hue. Look beyond their attitude, their ignorance of their own divine nature. Look beyond their anger. Remember that an angry voice is always about the speaker's own pain. During the period of marches for George Floyd, a congregant here inboxed me, wishing me as a person of color and I could speak on the racism from my perspective. So now I have spoken. I see it as ignorance and fear. All of us have fears. It, it's human, but we must not arm ourselves against that which is fearful. Instead, elevate ourselves so we are coming from the highest vibration of love. Remembering that we attract what we are. Let's practice being the energy of love so that we can transmute and attract love back. Fear is an illusion. Love will find its way. It always does. The Bible says in John 4.18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear. Ernest Holmes says, peace comes from the absence of fear, from a consciousness of trust, from a deep underlying faith in the absolute goodness and mercy, the final integrity of the universe in which we live and of every cause which we give our thought, our time, and our attention. Nope. God does not play favorites. Let's look at, you, at each other with new eyes, seeing everyone as God's unique creation. What was your corona bonus? Did it offer you time, time to be with yourselves, your thoughts, to possibly reinvent yourselves in terms of career? Or maybe you discovered that you like a slower pace. This new way of being in the world offered us a gift, a shift in communications, in networking, and global outreach, in the new way that we conduct business. It was bound to happen, but how quickly it happened without the pandemic may have been different. How quickly would we have accepted the savings of money by having our meetings virtually and without hotels, fuel, and airplanes? There's always opportunity, folks. We just have to be still and ask ourselves, ask what is trying to emerge from me? What is it that I need to heal? Am I a part of the problem? or am I a part of the solution? Some found in joblessness that they found their passion. Some were burnt out and tired of traveling and commuting. They found jobs working from home. 
Someone I talked to said without the demands of a job, they were able to tap into their dream of teaching and eating healthier. Hmm. Some discovered how to communicate more effectively and get along with their spouses since they were in such con close contact. <laughs> Some discovered new recipes and honed their cooking skills. Some became inventors. Some discovered the value of meditation and truly being still and listening. I recently put in a call to my step-granddaughter and she told me that she had COVID. She was sent home from work to quarantine. One of my questions was, did you get the vaccine? She replied, her doctor advised her against it due to her personal medical history. But without a beat, she quickly told me about having time. Time, she said, had provided her the opportunity to read several personal improvement books. One I remember she shared was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And she also started an e-commerce business. This pandemic gave us all time to be still and to listen to our hearts. Many have said that they discovered their, their values have changed during this time. Values that they did not have a conscious knowing of. For example, one person told me that their bonus was how much they miss friendships. Ask yourself, what was your value discovery? Was it learning to be still, not to talk so much? The value of your health, to value meditation more, to let go of small hurts and unforgiveness? Was it discovering a new world view and its possibilities to eradicate systemic racism? Ideas to feed and house the homeless? Ideas for more service to the planet? More respect for essential workers? Was it learning to trust science more after seeing loved ones and friends dying of COVID? Was it becoming more in touch with and relying on your sense of discernment? Was it increasing your technical and communication skills? I invite you to reflect and decide. Were you able to find opportunity? There's always opportunity. Opportunity to discover our gifts. For me personally, I was still long enough to embrace my creative writing and wrote a couple of screenplays that surprised me by winning and placing in a few contests. I've always enjoyed my own company and wanted more time to be by myself and to just to enjoy talking less. But for some of us, it is difficult to be with oneself. I actually know people who, if it gets too quiet, they have to pick up the phone, call someone, create some drama, get on social media, turn on the radio or television, try to find an errand to run, try to find some reason to talk. They can't be quiet with their own thoughts. I read about a person who was traveling like crazy, always had three or four trips booked, always trying to find something to occupy her time. After spending three months in her home without going outside, her perspective of home versus travel completely changed. She said she learned the sweet spots in just staying home. Always remember, you can't escape you. You take you with you. <laughs> if you're not happy at home, chances are you won't be happy wherever you go. Europe, Asia, Hawaii, it won't matter. We have to do the inner work. Learn to love you. See ourselves as the plus one. 
or peace, happiness, and a sense of fulfillment will always elude us. Corona bonus offered us a chance to let go, to let go of old habits that no longer serve us, of people who no longer serve us, and it offered us a time to get back to realize that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. The kingdom of heaven is within you, not without. And we are choosing from moment to moment with our choices how to co-create it, live it, and embody it. My prayer is that it won't take another pandemic to get us to wake up to what's important. Forgiveness, healing our wounds, healing the ignorance of racism, creating a system of justice and equality and love for all mankind. We are in very fertile ground for growth, expansion, and transformation in our work with one another and care for ourselves. The things are required for our transformation can leave us feeling out of control. Remember, our work is not about controlling the external circumstances so you can bring about what you think you need. Our work is to be present, as present as possible, to receive the blessings in the here and the now. Are you doing the things that are aligned with your intention for your life? Listen to your heart. It will tell you what to pursue and what to release. However, the energy of the all that is does not differentiate your experience as good or bad, right or wrong, suffering or bliss. We are able to have an experience of God, of joy, no matter what is happening, where we are geographically, or who we are standing next to. Bliss is always available. Your happiness, peace, and enthusiasm is not dependent upon the external world or the individuals that are within it. When we begin to simply remind ourselves of this, gently, you begin to inhabit it, to channel it. You begin to recognize that more and more you are choosing joy, peace, love, and enthusiasm. Indeed, it gave us time to listen to our hearts. Years from now, you will look back on 2020 as the year the coronavirus struck. And some of you will say, it sucked. Instead of examining our blessings. Or we could look back on 2020 and say it led me to 2021 with new ideas and new insights. And that was the year I finally answered the calling that's been in my heart for so long. I invite you to answer the calling, take the bonus, look at your perspective. Can you look back and be grateful? Grateful for the gifts and you know what they are maybe a greater sense of peace, gaining wisdom about what prosperity really is, finding your passion, reinventing yourself, developing your creativity, or maybe the gift of learning to live off less, or the realization that you don't have to travel to be happy, the gift of deepening faith, the gift of being able to receive and give, the gift of FaceTime, <laughs> the gift of Zoom, and don't forget, self-checkout. <laughs> Before I close, it all comes down to gratitude 
for the lessons gleaned from the 2020 plus year. I challenge you to watch your thoughts in 2020 and what words you speak about it. Can you look at the gifts instead of the challenges that this year presented? Have a greater appreciation for the social and communal aspect of life that we so took for granted. Do you have better coping skills? Do you have a deeper sense of gratitude? Or are you still playing the victim? Are you happy that you woke up this morning? I love being above ground. <laughs> it really cracks Dr. Mark up when he asks me how I'm doing and I say, Every morning I wake up and don't see yellow tape around me. I know it's going to be a good day. <laughs> and he said, I'm going to steal that. <laughs> Remember, God is in you, expressing as you. Peace and blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. Let us turn within to the sacred place of the Most High. That place of knowing that God is within and without. God permeates every cell and fiber of our being. I know that I am one with the divine presence, just as each and every part of me, known as you, those who are here and those who are not, those that I see and those that I don't see. We all live and move and have our beingness in pure spirit. I now know that we do not judge by appearances, but we have absolute faith knowing that everything is working out for our highest and best good. Therefore, we innately know that the whole universe is in divine order and know that 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 is within demonstrates itself without. It changes when we change. As we change our vibration to love, integrity, respect, healing is revealed. Wealth, tolerance, acceptance, peace, and unconditional love are revealed. I speak my word in deep gratitude for the wisdom to see the bonuses that have shown up for us and are continuing to show up. I bless this church, all churches, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, for we are all where we're supposed to be according to our own understanding. And now, in slowing our roll, we are open to divine wisdom and how it will be represented or show up in our life of affairs. I speak my word in gratitude and appreciation for frontline workers and the entire scientific community and the medical community for their dedication and commitment to service. Thank you for the bonus of consciousness evolution that is happening even now. And with a full and grateful heart, I release these words spoken into the law of mind and spirit. And now we just step into the finished kingdom. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. So we're going to sing one verse. 
I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I invite you to hold your place, your gift to your heart, and repeat after me. From the love of pure spirit, I bless this gift. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Sherry Williams, yeah. (laughs) 
you can get Sherry's music at sherrywilliamsmusic.com. Thank you again. I'm thanking all the soloists who have nice, easy websites to find. <laughs> and she's got some amazing music. So, And let's show some love and appreciation for our awesome Sam and Karen. <laughs> Boy, you stored up some good stuff over there. <laughs> uh, we graduated together. It's so fun when we get to be up here together. Yes. Still <laughs> so, okay, so a few announcements. Uh, donations um, can be made for those of you who are watching virtually. You can call into the church office, 818-762-7566, and we'll be here for about 30 minutes after service to take your donations by credit or debit card over the phone. Or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you to the donation page where you can do a one-time or set up recurring, <coughs> pardon me, recurring gifts. Or I love that we have all these options. You can text the word GIVE to area code 818-457-3419. However you are choosing to support us, just thank you, thank you, thank you. And just another quick reminder that if you join Amazon Smile, so it's smile.amazon.com, and you designate our church as a recipient, uh, they will give a portion of any of your purchases to the church. So that's another way you can support the church as well. Again, thank you for being there and helping us to continue to be here as well. Prayer with a Practitioner is available via Zoom after the service, so you can get onto the Zoom link if you're on Facebook Live. Just go to our website, get on Zoom, and we can connect you one-on-one -on -one in a private breakout room with a practitioner. Here in the sanctuary, uh, we have a couple of practitioners who are here. If you would like prayer after service, please come forward. And um, if for any reason we're unable to do the prayer now or you can't stay for prayer, sign up uh, the log in the foyer. Uh, let us know how a practitioner can reach you by phone and we will have someone call you and pray with you. You can also email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call in the church office and option four on our menu allows you to leave a voicemail message with your prayer requests. And we collect all of those prayer requests every evening and send them out to our practitioners so you can be sure you'll be supported in consciousness. Wednesday evening service, August 11th, this coming Wednesday, we have the meditation that starts at 6.50, service at uh, 7 p.m. in person and on Zoom and Facebook Live. And we're inviting you to join us. Our guest speaker this week is practitioner Bill Carpenter. And he will be joined by me. And his topic is walking the primrose path. Yeah. I think there might be a couple here in the flower range. But anyway, <laughs> our grief support group uh, for anyone experiencing any kind of loss uh, they are meeting this afternoon at 1 p.m. via Zoom. That is led by practitioner Carol Winokur. She's really masterful at helping people through the grief process. So please take advantage of that or let anyone you know who's going through any experience of grief, uh, let them know about it. Next Saturday, uh, we will be having a celebration of life for our beloved congregant, Taryn McEwen. Some of you may remember Taryn from some of the theater productions we did here at the church. Uh, just a beautiful light in our community. And that will be so next Saturday at 4 p.m. in the sanctuary as well as on Zoom. And the Zoom link is on our uh, website. Women, Food, and God Workshop with Reverend Nadine <laughs> will be on Saturday, August 21st from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Lunch is included. You can sign up on our website for this wonderful workshop based on the book with the same name by Janine Roth. Uh, cost is $30, and the book is available on Amazon. So next week, our youth church is reopening next Sunday, August 15th. We're just so excited to be welcoming back our youths ages 3 through 18. 
back to church. So that'll be for the 9.45 a.m. service, since that's the one service we're doing right now. And uh, it'll be over in the youth church. And parents with children that are under three are welcome to bring them to the mommy, daddy, and me room uh, behind the, in the back of the sanctuary, behind those windows at the back. Zoom virtual patio continues before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services for the congregation. Those of you who can't come back in person yet um, to stay connected that way. Our men's group, group meets every Sunday on Zoom from 11 to 11.30 a.m. All men are welcome. Our Zoom meditation continues every morning from 8 to 8.15 a.m. Monday through Saturday. And uh, a couple of things. I want to say special thanks to Pat Wilson's Caring Circle for these flowers today, wishing Pat speedy recovery from her injury. Um, I also want to take a moment, for those who don't know, uh, our beloved Regan McKenna family is moving to Delaware. I know Dean and his sister Ray are leaving tomorrow. They will continue to be part of our community via Zoom. But when Reverend Nadine was talking about finding our untapped skills and talents, can I tell you the day I called Dean and said, we need to make this thing happen online. There's a pandemic happening. Can you take over Zoom? <laughs> So much of the fact that we've stayed connected via Zoom is thanks to this man and the whole family. Would you please? <laughs> All of you. <laughs> we're going to miss you so much, but I know we're still staying connected remotely. With that, uh, just a reminder, you can get information about things going on here at the church on our website, nhcrs.org. Uh, just again, thank you so much for being with us in person and virtually, and let's stand and join in the peace song. you to please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.